Yeah, so I'm delighted to be joined by Lloyd Alquist, better known as Epic Lloyd, who is one half of the co-creators of Epic Bat Battles of History. Um, so obviously has a massive YouTube channel, which has got something like 3.5 billion views. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for your time. I, I, mean, I guess the place to start is, I, I've interviewed a lot of comedians, um, and a lot of things, one of the things they always talk about is how kind of difficult it is to get into. It's such a tough industry to get into, and you often have to make kind of early sacrifices um, and personal sacrifices. And um, did you find it really tough to break through in comedy? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> I mean, the epic rap battles of history started when I was, I think, 31. I was yeah. like, maybe, you know, and I, I left, I, I, I left college in 1998 and moved to Chicago to study and perform comedy. So I was like working and touring and grinding for the better part of 10 or 12 years um yeah. so yeah it's hard you can make it though the the nice thing that i didn't realize when i first started is i used to think it was feast or famine you're either famous or you're broke yeah. and uh, the nicest thing i learned is that there's a whole middle ground of just sort of blue collar working comedians who they're not millionaires but they're making their living doing what they want so yeah. that was refreshing and and nice to find out I mean, because your background's an improv, right? I'm mean, kind of the origins of epic rap battles of history is a kind of an improv show that you thought would make a really good YouTube series. Yeah, I mean, say that again. What was your question? Um, your background's an improv. I mean, I read that the kind of the origins of epic rap battles of history is like a kind of a live show that you thought would make a good YouTube series. Yeah, it was a. I used to do a like a freestyle comedy rap show. And one of the segments was called Celebrity Rap Battle. And we would ask the audience for suggestions. And, and that's, that was the seed that became the, the epic rap battles of history. Okay, cool. I mean, like, I was surprised because I, I first came across you after, I think it was your, I found your second video back in 2010. So it was a Hitler versus um, Vader. And that, was, that went massive. Um, I mean, weren't you surprised like how quickly you became really big? I mean, as I say, like the, the, the second video just went viral. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very different story than most, not most. We have a very different story than a lot of YouTubers in so yeah. much as that we didn't, I wasn't doing YouTube videos for years beforehand and like chipping away and then finally this happened. I was doing comedy, but it wasn't YouTube or videos. So when that second video went as big as it did, it was like, what? I didn't, I didn't really quite understand it, you know, because yeah. YouTube was a very different place back then. There was, there was no reference of a YouTube or, or YouTube famous or any of that. So there was nothing to compare it to. So we were like, what is going on? What, what are, why do, these, these numbers can't be real. That, that was the thing for me, <laughs> the numbers. Just these large yeah. numbers with like commas in them. And, and you know, that was hard to fathom for many years. I mean, what point was it that kind of like Epic Rat Battles of Battles History became like your main income, your main job? Uh, episode eight. That was when that's it became that. my main job. That's, yeah. that's pretty early. That's um, pretty soon into the process. Yeah, it was um, at the time we were with a company called Maker Studios and they were what you, they used to call an MCN. They really don't exist that much anymore, but they were very smart about getting the creators to just create as much as they could. So they wanted to free people up. So, you know, they like a lot of businesses, I think they got a lot of funding and things and then they just were yeah. able to free people up. Like I own a comedy club in Santa Monica, yeah. uh, westsidecomedy.com. And uh <laughs> Uh, I was working there at the same time for those first eight episodes and I was sort of just switching time back and forth. And finally they brought me in and they asked me if I wanted to, I thought they were going to, I don't know what they were going to ask me. I, th I thought they were going to ask me if I wanted to make a video or be in somebody else's video. And they were like, you know, what, do, what do you think about coming to work here full time for the Epic Rap Battles of History? And I was like, wow. Yeah. So that was a great <laughs> I mean, don't you have um, a kind of like, I mean, you have kind of a team of writers. Is that full time or is that part time? They're part time. And we use um, we use a bunch of different people. Our main writer is a, a man named Zach Sherwin, and he's been with us since the very beginning. He played Albert Einstein in one of our most popular videos. And 
So he he's been a constant writer for us nearly the entire series. Yeah. And then our other writers will will either pay them by the script or will will seek out if like we're using a female character, we'll go and try to hire some female writers and things like that. So they're not full time. They're much more like gig based, I would say, or script based. Yeah. I mean, so you mentioned about YouTube having changed quite a lot. I mean, so you guys started in 2010. I mean, how much, what kind of the big changes you've noticed? I guess the other thing, um, I've spoken to a lot of YouTube creators who say they have problems with, um, in the last two years of advertising, with YouTube demonetizing anything which is kind of vaguely controversial. Um, and a lot of them do stuff which is really not that controversial. I was wondering if you had an issue with that and kind of how you found the platform changing. Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen massive changes in YouTube. And I think the biggest change would just be the commonplace of YouTube as opposed to what it was before. It's no longer this underground niche thing that people are like, what's a YouTuber? <laughs> like our first couple years when we would, we, you know, we're in Hollywood, so there, we're always going around and pitching or auditioning. And in the first couple years, we were like trying to sell ourselves to these different production companies or different, not sell the project, but just like sell the idea that YouTube videos are popular. And people were like, eh, it's never really gonna take off. So that <laughs> has changed yeah. quite a bit. You know, you have people like, you know, PewDiePie and Logan Paul and, and, and Lily Singh who are going directly from YouTube to do massive, massive things bigger than Main Street artists are. So that has been a big change. And then, you know, YouTube's policies with regard to advertising, they have become stricter and we have felt that. Um, but I never begrudge that uh, yeah. because they have been so far ahead of the game in terms of paying content creators uh, for so long that for them to do things like that has never been a situation of them trying to be greedy. It's It makes perfect sense to me in terms of like, we have these advertisers. This is what their brand represents. They don't want their brand to be associated with certain types of content. I under, completely understand yeah. that. So um, it, it is difficult because we're so dependent on that platform. Yeah. Um, but there's so much opportunity now to like expand laterally and move into other, uh, you know, you can go on Twitch, you can do Instagram, you can do Patreon, you can do all these other things that if you haven't made YouTube a part of a machine that is your business by this point, you're a little bit behind the ball now anyway. <laughs> I mean, is YouTube ad revenue kind of like your main revenue stream? Because I, I, obviously I know people can download your, um, your your songs and I know you kind of tour as well and stuff. Is it kind of like a mix of stuff or mainly for YouTube? Uh, it's a mix. I would say it's, you know, it's the YouTube um, views and then also people consuming the music. Yeah. It's kind of nice for us because we are a musical show there's that that second half is sort of built in yeah i mean like in terms of your writing process do you guys kind of all write together have you got like a writer's room or do you kind of write individually and then push it together how, how does it work you know it's never really exactly the same i mean it's <laughs> changed drastically in the last couple months obviously but we at our best when we do the best or when we're at our most focused and this last season has been some of our best writing in my opinion yeah we take, we take joke submissions from our writers and even from our patrons on Patreon. Yeah. We'll submit, you know, we'll research for weeks and read and, and, and conversate and do things. And then we'll just take jokes, like we call them couplets. So like just rhyming couplets, where if you just mash them together, it would be very choppy and it wouldn't, they would make sense as jokes, but they wouldn't make a very cohesive song. Yeah. And we are, we are, of course, submitting our own jokes and writing our own jokes. And then we take that sort of big stew of jokes and then we pick the best ones or decide based on, you know, what the visuals of the video is going to be. Sometimes you have to say certain jokes like, hey, this person is going to enter here. So we have to say something that sets that domino in motion. So we take all those things and then cram them into a song. And then we just sort of polish and polish and polish and polish and polish. And then, you know, Pete and I usually at the very end or somewhere in the middle of the process, we'll get together just he and I or just he, me and Zach and then just bang them out and make sure that they all make sense and punch them up. Yeah. And then, and then they, they, the lyrics continue to change all the way up until the recording process and inside the recording process as well. 
usually that has been then I'll take my side and Pete will take his side and I'll record right in here and Pete will record at his house and then we can share those files back and forth and then we that becomes the song yeah. because the character the character you know like if you're Pennywise and you have a joke and it's just not sounding like Pennywise like on paper it looks right <laughs> fine yeah but then he says it a certain way and then that'll change it too at the end yeah i mean i saw quite recently that you put i think it was on your second channel um kind of one, one of the videos that didn't quite make the cuts so i think it was henry the eighth versus um hillary clinton mm -hmm. um, yeah. i mean do you get that quite a bit are there kind of videos like you shoot and you think this is a great idea and then you actually see the finished product and go yeah not quite so sure about that or, or is that kind of like pretty unusual that, that's unusual that that's the only video we have of that nature where we actually okay. shot it we got the actors in and you know that's shay carl who's you know sort of a big personality himself yeah. so we we oftentimes will write the writing process we'll get to that point where we'll get a demo down or we'll get a bunch of lyrics together and then it just doesn't work yeah we normally don't shoot and then not because it's too there's too many people involved it's it's yeah. it's like too much it, we would we wouldn't be able to sustain a business if we kept doing that. <laughs> I mean, are there like any historical figures that you'd really like to include but just haven't managed to kind of find an excuse or, or write them in yet? Uh, yeah, tons. Um, <laughs> I've wanted to do, um, you know, one of my favorites is Conan the Barbarian versus Conan O'Brien. Nice. I've been a big advocate of that. Conan O'Brien isn't really a massive historical figure, but Conan for me growing up as a kid for like the sword and sorcery world, I loved that. Yeah, uh, we've been, you know, with the pandemic going on, we've been thinking about, you know, the medical field and who are the fathers of that? You know, is it Hippocrates or, you know, you know, Salk or, or Florence Nightingale or these people? So stuff like that. They're always that's the great thing about history is it's, it's deep and there's <laughs> we could probably do 700 episodes and still have people that we would be missing, you know, Amelia Earhart haven't done her or or uh, Harriet Tubman or you know any of these folks I mean one thing that really impressed me I mean say so I, I, I my kind of background is in history um, is that you guys clearly really do your research um, I mean there's a lot of really detailed stuff there's a lot of kind of I mean I'm, I'm sure it's the same for all your videos but it's kind of in jokes you need to know a little bit about the background to get I mean do, do you guys employ researchers or do you do your own research how exactly does that, that work no we've never employed researchers we've hmm. always dug into that ourselves, you know, and we really go pretty deep into it. Well, you know, when we did Jim Henson and, and, and Pete just had puppets all over the studio for weeks and he was just becoming a puppeteer. And, you know, I did, um, when I did, uh, Steve Irwin, I, I know how beloved that character is. So, yeah. you know, sometimes the research is, you know, I sent out the lyrics to a friend who lives in Australia and I was like, can you say these? Because I don't want to get this <laughs> accent wrong. That's awful. So the yeah. researching is a big part of honoring that character. And I think a big part of why most of the people who we've done and portrayed in the battles have always enjoyed it almost as like a badge of honor. Like we've never yeah. had too much trouble with people being like, take that down or, you know, <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. That's, funny enough, that's just what I was going to ask you next. I mean, do you get much contact from people that you, I mean, obviously people that are still alive that you portray um, saying, you know, I, I really like that or had an issue with this or, or anything like that? No one's ever had an issue. We've definitely oh, yeah. had people say that they liked the videos. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah, so we've been in touch. So people have got, you know, Donald Trump even tweeted us, which was kind of... <laughs> uh, uh, David Copperfield got in touch with us. And when we did Napoleon Dynamite, the director of the movie got in touch with us and he loved it. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, that's really fun. That's always really fun. I mean, I've noticed that, obviously, you touch a little bit on politics in some of your videos. Uh, and obviously now it's quite a, a fiery time in American politics. Um, I mean, do you think kind of like things have changed at all in terms of um, how your comedy works during the Trump era? Or is it just kind of the occasional video like Trump versus Clinton um, and Obama versus Romney? You know, we do the elections and it, because it's such a simple correlation for a rap battle. It's, it's an election. It's a versus situation. So we've done the elections the last uh Geez, the last three elections we've done. No, two. My bad. The last two elections. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the one coming up in November, I, I, I plan to do it again. The uh, polarization of the Hillary Trump battle was surprising to me. Yeah. Um, but looking back in hindsight, it shouldn't have been, but it was. Yeah. Um, and that is 
uh, versus Obama Romney was like our most popular video. And, you know, he was such that 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 particular electric election was he had so much steam. He was very well liked at the time, Barack Obama. And then in 2016, it was so contentious. And so like families were fighting and Facebook was going crazy. So coming up on, in this election, I'm looking at it a little bit more nervously i'm not nervous but we have 15 million subscribers 14 and a half million subscribers so there's going to be people on both sides of the fence no matter what yeah. we are there's going to be both people on, and and i've always been a big proponent of like whether or not i like the politics we have to represent those characters as if we like the politics because yeah. otherwise it's just a it's just a message you know and that's not we're not in the message business we're in the battle business you know in the, yeah. in, like, in the comedy business so that's always a little bit like crawling into somebody's skin that you're not necessarily a fan of it's kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> i mean obviously you've done some to put it mildly pretty controversial figures but is there kind of anyone you think is like beyond the pale or, or any subject anything that's just too hot to handle or is it kind of anything goes if, if, if you write it right you know i i don't i i have I, I I'm like all whatever. Very early in his YouTube um, page career, Pete made a promise to some of his subscribers that he would never do Jesus. Um, okay. I think he had some very very friendly, very nice, very loyal subscribers who were with him in the very beginning, who were you know very into Jesus, and they just didn't. Yeah. They're just like, man, just don't do it. it. You don't need to. There's somebody else to do. So he kind of made that promise. So that's always sort of been an informal promise for the epic rap battles of history. Okay. We haven't done Jesus yet. Um. You know, I think we get nervous with like uh, um, North Korea or like if there are like, <laughs> you know, like political political people that were like, oh, what would happen if they like really got pissed? So like, like, yeah. like someone's got like a state behind him, like Putin or someone who's got like a record of yeah. causing well, we problems. Did Putin, so. We did Putin and that's that one. Of course you did. Yeah. No, in, in, in the, the Russian one, we're, we're fine. Yeah. So, so I don't, it never really bothers me. You know, I'm 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 sort of that roll i'm like let's do it you know like let's push it to the nth degree you know you know i think probably pete has a cooler head and that's good a lot of times because maybe i would get us in trouble yeah. but um yeah well nobody yet we'll, we'll see other than jesus everybody's been <laughs> very good. i mean obviously most of your battles are, are two people but you do do including the putin one kind of with, with five um quite regularly i mean are they very different to write very different to film or is it kind of the same sort of thing and just expanded out over a longer time span they're very different to write they're definitely the most challenging battles we do we call them the cavalcades so yeah. we've done maybe four or five of them we did just recently we did a uh, stand-up comedians and that was oh. one of the hardest battles we've ever had to write because you're writing comedy for comedians <laughs> So yeah, there's more characters, there's more costumes, there's more music, there's more voices, there's more everything is together all compiles. It makes a much more like a, a heavier workload, and it may or may not be more successful. Like the the number of people in a battle doesn't correlate to its success, unless yeah. maybe they're like big guest stars that have a large following themselves. But even in that that case, it doesn't always guarantee it. So the, we have to really be careful about how many of those we do and why and when and how we execute it yeah i mean it's interesting that you mentioned about kind of comedians being difficult because i mean so I, i've been you know watching your stuff I mean, pretty much since the beginning and i've been you know in the comment section i can see what people are saying i remember one thing that there was for a long time people kept saying do austin powers versus james bond um and it, it just you know kept coming over and over again in video after video and i think i think someone replied i can't remember who it was but it, it was kind of like you know it's hard to write comedy about a comedian um, but obviously, you, you know, you did do it in the end and it worked really, really well. But um, I mean, are comedians like the toughest people to write for or to write about? Um, I would say uh, comedians, there, there's a couple of tough ones. Comedians is definitely, especially stand-up comedians. Austin Powers wasn't that difficult, to be honest, because you, it was just basically doing an impression and that song fit right in there so musically. Um, the stand-up comedians was difficult because we wanted to write jokes that they would write. So if we're writing a George Carlin rat, we wanted uh -huh. it to be long and like like lots of words and wordy and like ranty, you know. And then we wanted um, Richard Pryor to be a little bit more, you know, sharper and cut around the edges. And then Joan Rivers like insults. So 
that was tough. Um, the toughest that we that I would think, and we haven't ever done it, is like some people will be like, do Tupac or do Eminem or you know something like that, and writing raps for a rapper <laughs> as a rapper, impersonating another rapper. I just don't know that would that would work. It might work for Tupac. It might work for Tupac. Uh, but why wouldn't Eminem just write it himself and just destroy everybody? You know what I mean? Like so that would yeah, be yeah. that would be that would be difficult. I mean, you've had quite a few rappers kind of coming on to your to your show. What, what's kind of like the reaction been amongst the kind of you know, the rap community um, to kind of your project? Uh, they like it. You know, it's I think what we do well is that we're not making a parody of battle rapping. We're just yeah. making battle raps that have characters that, you know, so you understand the context of the jokes more simply. So that was always my, cause I, I have a, a background in hip hop and I write my own yeah. songs and I did that before this ever happened. So I really love that music and the, and the culture and everything. So I never wanted to, it to be like a, you know? <laughs> uh, so the response has been really good. You know, Snoop Dogg came in and T-Pain was a big fan and, 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 and Charlie Tuna from Jurassic five, we got to work with and all these people that like do rap for a living and they get a kick out of it. Yeah. I mean, you're currently in your sixth series. I think that's right. I mean, do you kind of have um, plans to kind of expand beyond what you're currently doing or to kind of just carry on? Or, I mean, I, I, I know they've been kind of like family developments, but I think have impacted. Um, but is, is that the rough plan? Yeah. I mean, obviously with the pandemic, everything has sort of gone sideways in a weird yeah. way. Um, we, we have some side things that we've been doing and we were just starting to toy around with the idea of like, what could we do if we wanted to make this series a little bit longer or expand into this place or that place? But now, but that literally was happening like right in like, uh, January, February, and then this haul happened. So at yeah. this point we're we're sort of just making sure that everybody on our team is okay and taken care of and that they have what they need uh, to get by financially and things like that, if we can. And then um, looking to see what we can do remotely, you know, whether it's animation or stop motion or things that we don't need to be physically together to do. And then just also at the same, like just housekeeping, just making sure that things sort of stay moving and don't, you know, I, I go to the studio once or twice every week just to make sure that it's still there and no one's broken <laughs> into it and things like that. So yeah. that's kind of we're in sort of like a short term phase right now. And then once we get through this, we'll have to see where we go. I mean, just one final question. I'm sure you get this kind of thing a lot, but are there kind of like any other YouTube comedy I actually really recommend for you know, maybe aren't getting the attention they deserve uh, or, or you know, kind of spawn up and coming people? Hmm. I'm not sure if there's ones that haven't been getting the attention that they deserve. I really am a big fan of that show, Hot Ones. It's an interview okay. show where they ask, uh, you know, celebrities questions, but then they eat 10 wings that get hotter and hotter and hotter <laughs> as they go. It's just a great job. And the guy is a good interviewer and he asks, he asks really good questions like yourself. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to check this guy out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I watch mostly. I, I don't. You know, I make videos for YouTube, but I don't watch YouTube as much as probably a lot of other people do. Yeah. You know, I, I it it I love it, but if I go onto YouTube, I start to be I go into sort of like a work mode. It's sort of like a workplace for me. So yeah. if I'm going onto YouTube, I'm I'm like trying to check in with friends or seeing who's got something interesting tech wise that we should maybe try or something like that. So I'm not as deep into just absorbing it as I I used yeah. to be. Well, say, Lloyd, it's been a real pleasure. I'm um, say thank you so much for your time. 